As Vice Chancellor of the University, I declare this congregation open for the conferring of degrees by the authority of the Senate and the Council. I am delighted to welcome you all to this degree congregation. The High Sheriff of Rutland, parents, friends, sponsors, and graduates of the University of Leicester. We celebrate your many achievements that culminate in the award of a degree from a major international research and teaching-led university. While you have been with us, the university has developed and changed. We are now a community of 18,500 students and 3,000 staff, with a turnover of £167 million. It all demonstrates that universities are complex organisations. They are businesses with higher education at their heart. In these circumstances, the higher education sector has become a topic of interest to the media who regularly evaluate our work. In the last year, we have appeared in a range of league tables. Last August, we were placed in the top 20 research-intensive universities based on data produced by the University of Cambridge. We were also one of only 17 UK universities to appear in the top 200 universities and the top 500 universities in the world, being placed 179th in the former and 151st in the latter. I always regard the latter table as much more reliable. <laughs> in May, we were placed in 24th position in the Times League table. This constitutes a five-point rise for the University of Leicester, and it is our intention to go even higher. Indeed, Think of it like this. The higher we are placed, the greater the perceived value of your degree from this university. But you might ask, what constitutes our league table position? First, the development of teaching. This year, Leicester has been awarded three centres of excellence in teaching and learning in a national competition. In the fields of genetics education, geography, and physics. This makes us one of only 16 universities awarded more than one of these innovative centers. Meanwhile, subject reviews by external groups has resulted in 14 consecutive marks of excellence for this university, a situation that has only been matched by one other UK university. And finally, National Teaching Fellowships have been awarded to our staff. Last year, Dr. Derek Rain in Physics was awarded a fellowship, and this year we were delighted that Dr. Chris Wilmot in our Department of Biochemistry has also been awarded a National Teaching Fe Fellowship, which always requires very stiff competition. We are very proud of them both. In research, we have been identified as a leader in the field. In the Faculty of Medicine and Biological Sciences, the psychology department engages in forensic work, often in conjunction with the police force. Indeed, Professor Ray Bull recently received the very rare honor for a civilian of a commendation award from the Metropolitan Police in order to help them solve a very difficult case. In genetics, Professor Sir Alec Jeffries recently received a prize for solving a fundamental scientific problem, namely the mechanisms by which human genes are recombined. In the medical school, Professor Nilish Samani has received a major award from the British Heart Foundation by being awarded with one of only 30 special professorships in the UK. The list could be endless in terms of this faculty and the work that is done. These are just a few examples. Meanwhile, we have continued to develop 
high quality facilities for staff and students. The Henry Wellcome Building for Biomedical Sciences provides a £22 million state-of-the-art facility for biological scientists. This brings our total committed investment in biological sciences to £42 million this year. The Space Science and Mathematical Modelling Building was also opened this year and named in honour of our Chancellor, Sir Michael Atia. And among many new developments that we have begun is work on the University Library Project, which is an essential part of the research and teaching infrastructure of the university and constitutes a £28 million project for everyone on campus. It will be completed by June 2007. In addition, a new student hall of residence with 581 study, study bedrooms will be available in September 2006. All these facilities enhance the student experience in the University of Leicester. Meanwhile, we also make a significant contribution to our community, which comes in many forms. Contact, a student volunteer organization that the president of the student union refers to as the vice chancellor's favorite society, has seen over 500 students volunteering this year to help with right to read schemes, holidays for disabled children, and work in adventure playgrounds. For those of you who participate in this work, by creating a range of different facilities, you empower the people for whom the work is conducted. It changes their lives, and I am sure they will never forget the assistance they have received from students in the University of Leicester. Our Arts Week connects with those engaged in dance, drama, and music, where many links are made with local schools through our school's arts exhibition staged in the university in March. Meanwhile, our Centre for Disability and the Arts, named after Lord Richard Attenborough, promotes dance, music, and the visual arts through classes and public performances by international artists. Last Friday, at this time, we were opening our fourth international sculpture show in our botanic gardens. Again, it highlights the contribution that the university makes to the arts, and this year celebrates the centenary of the Royal British Society of Sculptors. The exhibits are expensive, but viewing is free, and I do strongly recommend it to those of you who are visiting Leicester this week. Finally, we need to constantly plan and build new facilities and raise funds for them. This year, we have raised over three million pounds to commence work on landmark projects. First, a cardiovascular research institute that will be built on the site of the Glenfield Hospital will not only advance fundamental and clinical research, it will also have much work going on that will benefit the people of Leicester, Leicestershire, the region, and also nationally and internationally. It is an international research facility. Meanwhile, the University Library Project is also one where we are fundraising. And indeed, if during the course of the morning you turn to the uh, brochure for today, and you flick through to the last page, you will see there is a wonderful opportunity to sponsor a university chair in the new library. Better still, if you're going to persuade your parents that you, know, you want to have fond memories of all that time you spent in the university library, then what better way for them to commemorate it than filling in the form for a chair? The work in this university, I'm pleased to say, never stops. We are creating plans for new research, new teaching programs, and new community links. And we do this in a variety of ways, by developing our contribution to the arts through links we have established with local artists, through developing new research in medicine, genetics, forensic science, and other areas of endeavor in the university 
through developing new teaching programs and appointments in a whole range of areas, including film, the media, chemistry, and across medicine and biological sciences. New exhibitions are planned in the Richard Attenborough Center. The list could be endless and demonstrates once again that you are members of a dynamic university. Finally, I would like to congratulate you all on the degrees you have obtained. We hope you will keep in touch with the university and I shall look forward to meeting you at alumni events. But before I close, I think I should um, tell you how I've been uh, making comments on the reputation of your predecessors. Each year I try and get a competition going between the different faculties and I reminded the Faculty of Arts yesterday that last year their predecessors actually ran medicine and biological sciences to a close run thing in terms of who could applaud loudest and longest. And I've been saying this year, the real competition is the degree ceremony on Friday morning. But it's all very well for me to, you know, say that because there's a catch this year. Normally, you're the last degree ceremony, so it's absolutely without question. We can immediately say, yes, you've done it again in medicine and biological sciences. But of course, this year, there's one more group this afternoon. Of course, I can wind them up this afternoon to try and get them to beat you. So one of the things that you've got to demonstrate to us today, I think, is that the Faculty of Medicine and Biological Sciences, without question, can applaud louder and longer than anyone else. So I would now like to invite you to join me in showing your appreciation to your parents, relatives, friends, and sponsors who have supported you through the university. So I would now ask the graduating class of 2005 to join with me in a round of applause for those people. very good, but I can't guarantee it won't be better this afternoon. So you're going to have to really try very hard this morning. Have an enjoyable day, applaud your fellow students, and all good wishes to you in your future careers. This morning is a very special occasion because it is the f first year in the history of the university that we have decided to introduce a new award that of Distinguished Honorary Fellow. It is introduced to identify very distinguished service to the university over a number of years. The maximum number of recipients for this award any one time will stand at 24. Normally, the individuals will already possess a, a, an honorary degree from the University of Leicester and will have engaged in very distinguished service with us over many years. It is, therefore, a very great pleasure for me to welcome to the degree congregation Dr. Frank May. Dr. Frank May is a very has had a very distinguished career as a local businessman, and it has been our great good fortune in the university that he has engaged in a lifetime of public service. In particular, he has spent a very large number of years working very hard on behalf of a whole range of people in the university, and he and his family have privileged us all by sharing their friendship with us. 
for which I can say I am personally very grateful and very appreciative. I came here six years ago, and it was really nice to find that there were several local people, but particularly Dr. Frank May, who welcomed me and demonstrated very clearly how much he supported the university. He's always supportive in a whole range of different fields. In particular, the Faculty of Medicine has benefited hugely over the years from his participation. He is president of MediSearch, which supports medical research in the university, having worked on that particular charity over a whole range of years. He has also introduced a system many years back where members of staff are invited to give prize lectures on an annual basis. It is terrifically successful, and there are many people sat behind me this morning who have benefited from this accolade during the course of their careers. And as I always say, people are very proud to have the Frank May Prize Lecture on their curriculum vitae. In addition, we also have a system inaugurated by Frank May of distinguished biennial lectures and I'm delighted to be able to say that this morning, our honorary graduate, Sir Peter Lackman, has been a Frank May biennial lecturer. And so from that point of view, it's bringing together people external to the university and internal to it to the benefit of all concerned. And we thank you very much indeed for the way in which you have continued to support and sponsor these events. In turn, the list is much broader than the medical school. The medical school has benefited greatly over the years, but so has the university library, because if you go and visit the library today, you will find in the entrance hall a sculpture that Frank May donated to the university. It will enhance the library when we have the new facility opening in 2007. Similarly, a year or two ago, we started a new, new degree in film in the Faculty of Arts, <clears throat> and the person who came forward thinking about the kind of facilities that we would require was Frank May. So the span of his interests and activities across the university go from the arts on the one hand through to medicine on the other. And indeed, many people across the university have enjoyed his friendship and his support over the years. It is therefore my very great pleasure to bestow on Dr. Frank May this morning the title of Distinguished Honorary Fellow of the University of Leicester. I award you with the title of Distinguished Honorary Fellow of the University of Leicester. Many congratulations. Vice-Chancellor, Pro-Chancellors, Pro-Vice-Chancellors, Members of Senate and Council, Honorary Graduates, Graduands, and Distinguished Guests. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor, for the generous introduction. I am delighted and proud to respond. I thank the University for the singular honor conferred upon me, Honoris Causa. The Distinguished Honorary Fellowship of this university is your most prestigious award. 
and the climax of my association with this university. Graduands, today is your day of celebration. Together we celebrate your academic achievement. It gives me immense pleasure to be celebrating my honor with all of you. And I congratulate our honorary graduate, Sir, Pe Sir Peter Lackman. Thousands of men and women of my era were the lost generation to academia. Our substitute for higher education was conscription. And at 18 years, we were drafted to do compulsory military service. Discipline, initiative, comradeship, tolerance and special skills were the training of our military challenges, all of which have been of benefit in my long and varied civilian career. Please allow me to pay tribute to those past and present who I have had the good fortune to work. Three vice chancellors, Sir Maurice Shock, Dr. Kenneth Edwards, and our present vice chancellor, Bob Burgess. Three deans of medicine, Lord Kilpatrick, Professor Frank Harris, and Professor Ian Lauder. It has been my special pleasure being part of this great institution. And under their guidance, I have been made aware of what makes a university special, especially this university. I thank them all publicly for guiding and assisting me to make a useful contribution, as well as their friendship. Graduands, you have made an excellent choice when you chose to come to the University of Leicester. In graduating, you have shown you have the skill, the discipline, and the capability to go forward. Make the most of your opportunities. I know you that you are all eager to receive your degrees, so take special care and pride as you cross the stage acknowledging the applause of your colleagues, family, and friends. You will enjoy this very special day. In your chosen career, you will encounter many choices. I ask you to reflect and remember the words attributed to Michelangelo. The greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it is too low and we reach it. Finally, we would not be here today but for the tremendous support and self-sacrifice of family, friends, and especially your tutors. I wish you all and the university every success for the future. The graduands in the Faculty of Medicine and Biological Sciences will be presented by the Dean, Professor Lauder. Will all graduands in the faculty please stand? Mr. Pro Vice Chancellor, I ask you to admit these candidates from the Faculty of Medicine and Biological Sciences to the several degrees for which they are presented. Graduates of the Faculty of Medicine and Biological Sciences, by the authority of Senate, I admit you to the several degrees for which you are presented. For the degree of Doctor of Medicine, Mark Childers. Well 
Savas Constanides. John Evans. David Everson. Ashraf Hasuno. Mahmoud Labuni. Leslie Jane Marshall. Kevin Malloy. Paul Morris. Michael Nord. David O'Brien. Achilles Siamis. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Reem Al Jayusi. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. John Arkellis. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. All the best. Timothy Barnes. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. Scott Bruillet. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. Sarah Louise Cockerell. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. Mary Jewer. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. Elizabeth Draper. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. Karen Garner. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. Mark Hills. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. Edel Hinnis. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Humar Khan. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. Ruth Mann. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. William Pickering. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. Richard David Riley. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well done. Daniel Tato. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. Colin Veal. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Caroline Woolston. Admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. For the degree of Master of Philosophy, Amanda Edwards. For the degree of Master of Arts in Social Work, Margaret Baker. Congratulations. Carmel Charna. Isabel Daniels. Bernadette DC. Anna Marie Doody. Congratulations. Well done. Ruth Harding. Congratulations. Well done. Noreen Khalid. Congratulations. Well done. Nicola Lambert. Congratulations. Well done. Jenny Lee. Congratulations. Well done. Sheetal Shilpan Naik. Gladys Mbi Oben. Congratulations. Well done. 
Lisa Padgett. Navjinda Palia. Teresa Pegman. Sungram Puni. Ian Price. Leslie Ratcliffe. Becky Reed. Nicola Rees. Sally Roberts. Bavika Taylor. Gemma Watling. Beth Welsh. Catherine Wetton. For the degree of Master of Science in Biology, Doris Egol. Well done, congratulations. For the degree of Master of Science in Child Health, Pamela Allen. Congratulations, well done. Dorothy Sebuliba. Congratulations, well done. For the degree of Master of Science in Medical Statistics, Stephen Fox. For the degree of Master of Science in Pain Management, Diana Butcher. Pauline Chin. Karen Cooper. Deborah Hippolyte. Penelope Lorida. Renuka Nadarajan. Grace Pern. Angela Roberts. Gillian Simon. Silji Hillmore Teg. Mary Thiriusavan. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences, the winner of the Physiological Society Undergraduate Prize, George Allen. <laughs> Mohammed Asmutali. <laughs> Emma Ball. Hello, Emma. Richard Bennett. Sean Bond. Oliver Boscher. Sarah Bordich. The winner of the Novartis Best Student in Second Year, winner of the Faculty Prize, winner of the Margaret Wallace Henry Prize and the Institute of Biology Prize, Sarah Broadbent. Katie Bryan. Armin Chen. Naomi Cochran. Miyatamunu Kuki. Emma Dawson. Jonathan Dexter. Vishal Dima. James Dixon. Congratulations, well done. Ruben Ferdinand. Congratulations, well done. Manuela Frenchia. Congratulations, well done. Amy Gammon. Congratulations, well done. Julia Glover. Congratulations, well done. Kirsty Henshaw. 
Francesca Hinman. Congratulations, well done. Mark Howard. Congratulations, well done. Derek Hussain. Congratulations, well done. Benjamin Ibbotson. Congratulations, well done. Jonathan Instone. Congratulations, well done. Imran Jamal. Congratulations, well done. Ekundir Joseph. Congratulations, well done. Bhavna Katwa. Congratulations, well done. Shamir Kishan. Congratulations, well done. Rachel Kwok. Congratulations, well done. Demetrius Ladakis. Congratulations, well done. Winner of the Physiological Society Undergraduate Prize, Oliver Lawton. Congratulations, well done on the prize. Dauphinon Le Bittillier. Congratulations, well done. Claire Lister. Congratulations, well done. Michelle MacDonald. Congratulations, well done. Lucy McPhee. Congratulations, well done. Liddy Melvin. Congratulations, well done. Claire Morris. Congratulations, well done. Claire Owen. Congratulations, well done. Rupinda Panasar. Congratulations. Bhavana Patel. Congratulations, well done. Vanessa Patel. Congratulations, well done. Stuart Paul. Congratulations, Stuart. Alexander Pickering. Congratulations, well done. Catherine Pinnock. Congratulations, well done. Mariam Raymond. Congratulations, well done. The winner of the Henry Walter Bates Prize, Carolyn Riddell. Congratulations, well done on the prize. Catherine Roberts. Congratulations, well done. Martin Robinson. Congratulations, well done. Misha Rudbari. Congratulations, well done. Catherine Scannell. Congratulations, well done. Mary Scannell. Congratulations, well done. Benedict Shorten. Congratulations, well done. Joanne Sharp. Congratulations, well done. Hayley Simpkin. Congratulations, well done. Paul Stephen. Congratulations, well done. Mohammed Tahir. Congratulations, well done. Brian Taylor. Congratulations, well done. David Taylor. Congratulations, David. Well done. Victoria Thomas. Congratulations. Rhiannon Todd. Congratulations, well done. Hayley Trigg. Congratulations, well done. Emma Whitaker. Congratulations, well done. Alex Wilkin. Congratulations, well done. Frederick Wilson. Congratulations, well done. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences, European Union, Nicola Dunning. Congratulations, well done. Abigail Phyllis. Congratulations, well done. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences, Sandwich, winner of the Adventist Prize, Lisa Eaton. Congratulations, well done on the prize. The winner of the Mayor Fund Prize in Biochemistry, Rena Mystery. Congratulations, well done on the prize. Winner of the Mayor Fund Prize in Biochemistry, Yi Sun. Congratulations, well done on the prize. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Immunology, Kate Creasy. Talia Estevies. Congratulations, well done. Ian Keir. Congratulations, well done. James Melbourne Thomas. Congratulations, well done. Genevieve Moody. Congratulations, well done. Winner of the Pat Williams Memorial Prize, Rashmika Patel. Congratulations, well done on the prize.
Luke Richards, Congratulations. Randeep Sandhu, Congratulations. Well done. Syed Tala. Congratulations. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Medical Biochemistry, Salma Ali. Lena Aljamal. Sabina Aziz. Olayemi Babalola. Richard Barton. Karen Creasy. Nicola Davis. Caroline Donnelly. Seyma Fazil. The winner of the Departmental Undergraduate Prize, Jonathan Howe. Congratulations, Jonathan. Well done on the prize. Rahima Ibrahim. Philippa Linus. Sarah Linden. Claire Massey. Akana Mohindra. Donna Parkinson. Eleanor Penny. Haley Platt. Catherine Reese. Kyu Shen. The winner of the faculty prize, Hannah Stagg. Louise Temple. Iram Youssef. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Medical Biochemistry Sandwich, Andrew Chadburn. Winner of the Medical Biochemistry Prize and the Novartis Best Student in Third Year Pharmacology Prize, Rachel Clifford. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Medical Genetics, Rupa Adesia. Zakia Ali. Dolipa Animashon. Eric Berkowitz. Jennifer Bone. Claire Bosomworth. Francine Bray. Tim Castiles. Laura Cato. Stacy Coleman. Bassam Jababri. Mina Fadi Shahada. The winner of the Departmental Undergraduate Prize, Sarah Fielding. Jennifer Gamlin. Amandia Gosal. Winner of the Departmental Undergraduate Prize, Victoria Grinstead. Tracy Hardcastle Davison. Susan Hardy. Andrew Jones. Alexander Little. Priscilla Lowe. James Luff. Victoria Marin. Joanna Morrison. Amar Nissar. Andrea Petru. Gemma Pinkstone. 
Simon Reed, Halima Sakrani, Satvinder Sandhu, Rajvinder Tata, Kirsty Woolley. For the degree of Bachelor of Science Intercalated, Christopher Beat. Winner of the AstraZeneca Physiology and Pharmacology Prize, Christopher Bentley. Sanjay Bandari. Caroline Canavan. Winner of the Charles Lawson Bursary for Intercalated Studies, Hannah Green. Well done on the bursary. Ali Hussein. Stephen Carr. Well Oliver Ung. Well Vinay Palmer. Well Maria Raja. Well Charlene Rodriguez. Bethany Stanley. Philip Vermeeren. Ahmed Youssef. For the degree of Bachelor of Medical Science, Jamie Gemmel. Mark Greig. Sir Peter Lachman came from his native Berlin to London in 1938. In the course of his distinguished career as an immunologist, he has held a chair at Cambridge University and has served as president of the Royal College of Pathologists, biological secretary of the Royal Society, and founder president of the UK's Academy of Medical Sciences. If that lofty eminence implies a man who sits calmly above the fray of public affairs, then that would give entirely the wrong impression. Sir Peter is, in fact, one of Britain's most engaged scientists, and his head is constantly above the parapet. The measure of that claim has been his willingness to enter into the public debate about genetically modified foods. He could have chosen an easier road, Many branches of medical science are thought by the public to be beyond criticism because medical scientists conduct the research that leads to cures for diseases and so contribute to the sum of human happiness. Professor Sir Peter spent many years as just such a scientist, achieving great distinction in his chosen field. He is, in the words of Lord Walton, the outstanding Cambridge immunologist. It is as a complementologist that he is best known. This is one of the most complex scientific fields in biomedical science and has been dreaded by generations of medical students. The intellectual qualities that draw the best academics to such difficult fields are apparent in Sir Peter's extraordinary breadth of knowledge. Our Dean of Medicine once mentioned the name of Margaret Beaufort, Countess of Richmond to Sir Peter, and referred to that noble 15th century lady as Margaret Tudor on the not unreasonable grounds that her first husband was Edmund Tudor. Sir Peter, far from being daunted by this decanal erudition, observed that she should not properly be called Margaret Tudor, Tudor because she subsequently became Margaret Stafford and then Margaret Stanley, Countess of Derby. It's somehow reassuring to know that senior medics do not spend all their time talking about intestines and the politics of health. In addition to these intellectual qualities, 
Sir Peter brings an uncommon measure of courage to his vocation. Some would think his passion for beekeeping an example of that courage, but there are less ambiguous instances. His outspoken criticism of Mrs Thatcher's health reforms earned him the enmity of powerful figures in government, but he refused to be silenced in the interests of his career. Similarly, in a hotel in the Yorkshire Dales, he put his dinner at risk by observing to the waiter that the homemade soup on the menu was certainly nothing of the kind and was markedly inferior to that prepared by his wife. To this combination of intelligence and courage, I would add a third quality, that of toughness. This is a man who can and does stride over the hills with his wife for up to 20 miles a day. This same quality is apparent in his contributions to the debate about GM foods. Those who choose to take their science from lobby groups rather than dispassionate scientific investigation have attacked him for his insistence that biotechnical innovation must be tested in rigorous scientific trials in the same way that new medicines must be tested before they are released into the marketplace. In the 1990s, GM foods became a football that anyone could kick. The Royal Society, as Britain's senior scientific body, rightly decided to investigate the issue of GM crops, and its expert group, chaired by Sir Peter, produced in 1998 a report entitled Genetically Modified Plants for Food Use. The report cautiously concluded that GM technology had the potential to offer benefits in food quality, nutrition and public health, and had important implications for agricultural practice both in Britain and in the developing world where food is sometimes in short supply. This was not, in the view of GM activists who had already made up their minds on the issue, the right answer, and soon the press was talking about Frankenstein foods. Students of English literature will recall that the food that prompted Mary Shelley to write Frankenstein was a piece of pasta. Erasmus Darwin, the grandfather of Charles, had mischievously told the young Mary Shelley that an Italian scientist had applied electricity to a piece of vermicelli and had brought it to life. Electricity, it was quite clear, was a technical innovation of which no good would come. This willingness to speak out on matters of national and international importance is one of the keys to what may prove to be Sir Peter's most lasting accomplishment. For three centuries, the Royal Society proclaimed in its annual transactions its resolve never to give their opinion as a body upon any subject. That comfortable position, beloved of the intellectually timid through the centuries, became untenable in the closing decades of the last century. And it was Sir Peter who gave the Royal Society a public voice. In 1998, he stepped down as an officer of the Royal Society to become the founding president of the Academy of Medical Sciences, which he had worked tirelessly over many years to establish. This academy, like Sir Peter himself, does not flinch from speaking out on issues of public policy that involve the biomedical disciplines. Indeed, far from declining ever to articulate a collective opinion on any topic, the Academy exists in part to provide expert advice to government and to policymakers on areas such as the regulation of biotechnology. Its record to date is impressive, and its potential to further the public good is vast. It is the creation of our honor and, and we are all in his debt. Sir Peter has been a fast friend of our medical school and its successive deans, and as our vice chancellor reminded us a few minutes ago, has indeed given the lecture endowed by his fellow honorand, Frank May. Mr. Vice Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and the Council, I present to you Sir Peter Lackman that you may confer upon him the honorary degree of Doctor of Science. I admit you to the honorary degree of Doctor of Science and welcome you among us. Many Thank congratulations. You. 
Mr. Vice Chancellor, colleagues, colleagues that are about to be, and honoured guests, um, I'm greatly honoured to receive an honorary degree from this distinguished university, perhaps even more so because I've never worked here. I do, however, know a lot of people who have. Um, of longest standing is my acquaintanceship with your distinguished Chancellor, Michael Atier, whom I first met when I went up to Trinity College in 1950, when he was already an awesome figure as a graduate student. Indeed, the high point of my undergraduate career was that I beat him at chess, although it must be confessed he was playing 20 boards simultaneously at the time. Uh, long afterwards, I served under him when he was president of the Royal Society, and he chaired the committee that led to the formation of the Academy of Medical Sciences. Um, in his absence, I would like to congratulate him on the fact that he is about to become president of the Royal Society of Edinburgh, and there are very few people who have been presidents of the Royal Society of both London and Edinburgh. Uh, the second um, distinguished Leicester graduate, alas, dead, whom I had a long association with was the late John Swales, your professor of medicine, with whom I formed a two-man editorial board of the British Medical Bulletin in the 1990s. Uh, John was a scholar and a gentleman, two properties which stood him in extremely ill stead when he became director of R&D at the Department of Health. And indeed, he had a hard time, and he was a fiery critic um, of that department, uh, both at the time which uh, the orator mentioned. I also was somewhat critical of them, and later. In my old field of science compliment, um, there is a distinguished presence in Leicester in the form of Professor Wilhelm Schwebele. Um, and in genetics, a field to which I sometimes think I might like to aspire, I have long known Alec Jeffries, a scientist who has the incalculable gift of being able to see gold in situations where others see only junk, particularly in repetitive DNA. I've also known well at least three successive deans of your medical school, uh, Robert Kilpatrick, under whom I served on the General Medical Council, and where I greatly admired his gift of becoming spectacularly cross when this seemed to be necessary to him, and where he was usually right. Uh, I sat on many committees with Professor Frank Harris, who was always a staunch defender, not only of this university, but of universities in general. But most closely, of course, I know Ian Lauder, your present dean, a distinguished histopathologist, whom I got to know well when we were both on the Council of the Royal College of Pathologists. And since then, we have worked together and walked together for many years, and I'm delighted that he has recently been elected treasurer of the Academy of Medical Sciences, where he will play a, a prominent role. As has already been said, I had the privilege of giving the Frank May Lecture in 1994, and I'm delighted to be sharing a, a platform with Frank when he is being honored again today. Finally, I did give advice to this university on the reorganization of their medical and biological sciences a few years back, and I was totally delighted to hear from Bob Burgess that the recommendations had not only been implemented, but that a few years later, the university is actually pleased with them. That vice chancellor, in my experience, is something about which one can be really proud. Thank you very much. <laughs> The remaining graduands in the Faculty of Medicine and Biological Sciences will now be presented by the Dean, Professor Lauder. Mr. Vice Chancellor, for the degrees of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery and the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Raman Verma. <laughs> 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 
Bachelor of Surgery, Bachelor of Medicine, and Doctor of Philosophy. Many congratulations. Well done. Congratulations. For the degrees of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, Ali Abbas. Congratulations. Well done. Samuel Adcock. Congratulations. Siohada Adnan. Congratulations. Matthew Ahern. Congratulations. Shiran Alakoni. Congratulations. Humura Alam. Congratulations. Jabba Al Shukri. Congratulations. The winner of the BMA Prize for Clinical Excellence, Simone Altaf. Tasneem Arif. Congratulations. Akmal Ashad. Congratulations. The winner of the Medical Women's Federation East Midlands Prize, Amy Athersmith. Congratulations. Well done on your prize. Khalida Ayash. Congratulations. Rima Ayash. Congratulations. Sarah Azam. Congratulations. Samuel Bartholomew. Congratulations. Elaine Bell. Congratulations. Thank you. Ricky Bell. Congratulations. The winner of the Smith Klein and French Prize, Timothy Bell. Congratulations. Thank you. Lucy Berkey. Congratulations. The winner of the Sydney Brandon Prize and Medal in Psychiatry, Lisa Birch. Congratulations, bye bye. Alex Bird. Congratulations. Jonathan Burks. Congratulations, thank you. Alexander Bonner. Congratulations. Ramez Borbera. Congratulations. Emma Bradley. Congratulations. Eamon Breslin. Congratulations. Sam Broad. Congratulations. Amanda Brown. Congratulations. Richard Brown. Congratulations. Alita Carboni. Congratulations. Riaz Chutu. Congratulations. David Cleveland. Congratulations. Rebecca Cooper. Congratulations. James Cowling. Congratulations. Ines de Silva Goncalves. Congratulations. Irenessa Darlin. Congratulations. Is it to Akmal Dato Haji Abdullah? Congratulations. Matthew Davies. Congratulations. The winner of the Pfizer Prize, Nicole de Grand. Congratulations. And well done. Bansdee Dillon. Congratulations. Rebecca Dobson. Congratulations. Well done. James Edmeads. Congratulations. Marbu Elai. Congratulations. Elizabeth Elsie. Congratulations. Well done. Are you Wafa Femi Eshel? Congratulations. Winner of the Arthur Watts Prize in Clinical Method, Fahana Fadzli. Congratulations. Well done, Manuel Prize. Amy Fultz. Congratulations. Victoria Fiddies. Congratulations. Eleni Fleury. Congratulations. David Fox. Congratulations. Timothy Fudge. Congratulations. Guy Furness. Congratulations. The winner of the Pfizer Prize, Priya Gandhi. Congratulations. Well done on your prize. 
Sandeep Gerianava. Congratulations, Baba. Thomas Gilberthorpe. Congratulations, Baba. Neelam Gill. Congratulations. Risha Gokani. Congratulations. Francis Gore. Congratulations. Emma Gray. Congratulations. The winner of the Tressida Prize, the BMA Prize, the John McVicker Prize and Medal, and the Charles Lawson Prize, Lewis Gray. Congratulations. Winner of the Faculty Prize, the Carl Zeiss Prize, Janak Gunatelika. Congratulations, Victoria Guratsky. Congratulations. Neil Hall. Congratulations. Keshdeep Hare. Congratulations. Kirsty Hayes. Congratulations. Richard Heaver. Congratulations. Sarah Hermitage. Congratulations. Rosemary Howe. Congratulations. Joanne Hunter. Congratulations. Winner of the elective prize, Edmund Ibrahim. Congratulations, the well done on your prize. Emily Jackson. Congratulations. Chris Johnson. Congratulations. Nicholas Johnson. Congratulations. Zoe Jones. Congratulations. Krishna Casaranini. Congratulations. Alison Kent. Congratulations. Rebecca Kenyon. Congratulations. Naveen Khan. Congratulations. Sabia Khan. Congratulations. Aman Khanna. Congratulations. The winner of the Zeneca Clinical Pharmacology Prize, Jessica Kitchen. Congratulations, and well done on your prize. Louise Nolson. Congratulations. Natalie Kruchenik. Congratulations. Subanya Kumar. Congratulations. Zana Ladipal. Congratulations. Katie Lauder. Congratulations. Peter Lax. Congratulations, Baba. Michael Little. Congratulations. Alexander Lockley. Congratulations. Thank you. Tamsin Lockwood. Congratulations. Sally Louie. Congratulations. Nueni Lyon. Congratulations. Thank you. Adam Maggio. Maggio! Congratulations. Winner of the elective prize, Lisa Manning. Congratulations. Bye bye. Jing Fang Mao. Congratulations. Timothy Millward. Congratulations. Pratesh Mystery. Kara Maluli. Congratulations. Graham Mulvihill. Congratulations. Winner of the elective prize, Christine Nuns. Congratulations. Ogafori Obakpanovi. Congratulations. Rebecca O'Brien. Congratulations. Rob Pascal. Congratulations. Amisha Patel. Congratulations. Farouk Patel. Congratulations. Naomi Patel. Congratulations. Bavesh Poppert. Congratulations. The winner of the Arthritis and Rheumatism Prize, Bryony Price. 
Congratulations and well done on the prize. Mirwish Kreshi. Congratulations. Sega Radia. Congratulations. Melanie Richins. Congratulations. Jan Rigby. Congratulations. Laura Rowlands. Congratulations. The winner of the Faculty of Medicine gold medal, Megna Ruparelia. Congratulations and well done. Radu Winder Sahatu. Congratulations. Dipti Samani. Congratulations. Sophia Sava. Congratulations. Charlotte Sayer. Congratulations. Sam Sede Izadeh. Congratulations. Sejal Shah. Congratulations. Rahul Singh. Congratulations. Robert Smith. Congratulations. Well done. The winner of the Roche Pharmaceuticals Prize and the Keeler Prize, Richard Stead. Congratulations. Well done on the prizes. Victoria Suen. Congratulations. Camel Deep Tamba. Congratulations. Edwin Tang. Congratulations. James Tanner. Congratulations. Simon Tarsha. Congratulations. Peter Truram. Congratulations. Charlotte Tunstall. Congratulations. Lisa Turner. Congratulations. The winner of the Sir Robert Kilpatrick Prize, Natalie Turner. Congratulations and well done on your prize. Nadia Wahid. Congratulations. Christopher Wakeling. Congratulations. Oliver Wildman. Congratulations. Anna Wilkin. Congratulations. Vanjay Willis. Congratulations. Patrick Wilson. Congratulations. Sarah Wilson. Congratulations. Michael Wong. Congratulations. Gang Zhu. Congratulations. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I ask you to admit to the several degrees for which they are presented by my faculty, those candidates who are absent. By the authority of the Senate, I admit those candidates who are absent to the several degrees for which they are presented. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I now invite a representative, a representative of those whom you have admitted today to the degrees of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery to come forward to the platform in order that she may lead them in the affirmation of the Declaration of Geneva. Will all graduates and degrees of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery please stand? time of being admitted as a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge myself to consecrate my life to the service of humanity. I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due. 
they will practice my profession with conscience and dignity. The health of my patient will be my first consideration. I will spread the secrets which are confided in me, even after the patient has died. I will maintain by all means in my power the honor and the noble traditions of the medical profession. My colleagues will be my brothers and my sisters. I will not permit consideration of religion, nationality, race, politics, or social standing to intervene between my duty and patients. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life from its beginning even under the bread, and I will not use my medical knowledge contrary to the laws of humanity. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my own. An academic colleague nominated for the award of a University Teaching Fellowship will now be presented by the Pro Vice-Chancellor for Learning and Teaching, Professor Fothergill. Mr Vice-Chancellor, I present to you this academic colleague who has been nominated on the recommendation of the Learning and Teaching Committee for the award of University Teaching Fellowship for the forthcoming academic year. In recognition of her outstanding contribution to the development of interprofessional healthcare education, Dr. Elizabeth Anderson, Department of Medical and Social Care Education. High Sheriff, Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. As Senior Pro Vice Chancellor, I'm privileged and pleased to have this opportunity to add my congratulations to all of today's graduates. First, I would like to thank our honorary graduate, Sir Peter Lackman and our distinguished honorary fellow, Dr. Frank May. As you have heard, we honor Sir Peter for his sustained and distinguished contributions to clinical immunology, and Dr. May for his constant and generous support of the university and the medical school over many years. They honor us as a university by accepting our invitation to join our community, and by being here today to add luster to our ceremony. But today is really a day of celebration for the graduates at bachelor's, master's, and doctoral levels who have earned their degrees through examination and through theses. Mixed with the sweet feeling of relief that it's all over should be a real sense of achievement. The achievement is yours, but your teachers and tutors, your mentors, share in the thrill of that achievement. We are delighted for you and with you. Final examinations in the UK system represent an unusual and demanding test. Writing three or more essays in three or more hours on three or more topics is a test of staying power and writing speed as well of course as of knowledge and insight. 
The examinations in the MBCHB program, of course, are different in style, but broad ranging and no less demanding. You will now be enjoying the pleasure of not having finals looming over you and knowing that you will not have to face them again. But I should warn you from personal experience, there is a recurring nightmare involving being drastically underprepared for phantom finals set at short notice by demonic examiners. The degree ceremony, with its ritual that has lasted for centuries, represents the passing on of knowledge to the next generation. I like to think that what we're really passing on is an approach to acquiring knowledge, analyzing it appropriately, and utilizing it effectively. During my working life, I've been lucky enough to have met and worked with many successful people in science, in business, and in the law. Knights of the realm, Nobel laureates, captains of industry, even vice chancellors, no less. In my observation, they have two characteristics in common, a deep enjoyment of what they do and a remarkable capacity for hard work. A little luck also helps, but be mindful of Louis Pasteur's dictum that fortune favors the prepared mind. In a different sphere and era, Gary Player, the great South African golfer who dominated world golf in the 60s and early 70s, put it very succinctly when he said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Both inside and outside universities, the world of 2005 is a challenging and exciting place. Knowledge is generated faster and is more accessible than ever before. You are well equipped to take advantage of these changes. The arts and humanities greatly enrich all our lives. Science and technology can solve many of our logistical and economic problems. Advances in medicine are allowing us gradually to win the fight against infectious diseases. Antibiotics remain powerful tools against bacterial diseases, despite the publicity given to MRSA. In my lifetime, the viruses causing poliomyelitis, smallpox, hepatitis B, have been effectively controlled by vaccines. Exciting progress is being made with vaccines against human papillomavirus. This morning it was announced in the journal Science that the genome sequences of three trypanosomes, those parasites that cause African sleeping sickness, Chagas disease and leishmaniasis, have all been determined, completely sequenced. Knowing the sequence of the enemy's genes and thereby of its proteins opens up a range of predictable strategies for devising treatments or vaccines. Progress is of course more difficult and much needed in vaccines or treatments for malaria, for HIV AIDS and hepatitis C amongst others. And of course the scourges of cancer and neurodegenerative disorders remain as huge problems to be solved. We cannot all contribute directly to the cure for AIDS or malaria, though some of you might. But we can all make a small contribution to improving the lives of people around us by taking a positive, constructive, and thoughtful attitude to our roles, whatever they be. There are obviously enormous challenges for your generation to face and to solve, but a problem is also an opportunity. I am confident that collectively you will be equal to the task. I wish you well in whatever you do in your subsequent careers. Thank you.
Well, this brings us to the end of the proceedings for this morning. I think it would be fair to say I can take an executive decision at least so far by saying that this faculty is clearly uh, the leader at the moment in the applause competition, just about, I think. Um, but I'll have to check this over the lunch hour. But I th there's still the risk for you of this afternoon. So I think one more time, a round of applause from the, from the graduating class of 2005. And you're really going to have to make sure that you are the winners this, this year. I now declare this congregation closed.